Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Grand Edge, the show where we talk about the most interesting decks to play around with. And today, we're going to be looking at the second meta, well, top meta deck in our snapshot, and that's going to be the Fist of Flurries, Scaliger deck. Because, yeah, we uh, kind of got a very, very cool, basically, Witcher's Scaliger deck that we're going to be taking a look at right now. So, let's head into the deck builder. So this deck is obviously called Fist of Flurry because we're using the updated Reckless Flurry ability. As usual, if you know what these cards do, you can skip this part of the video and head back, head straight into the example matches. You can do so in the timeline down below. But for anybody who doesn't know what every single card in this deck, I'll just scroll through this rather quickly. If you don't know certain cards or how they will be used, I'm going to go through them one by one in extreme detail. So uh, to anybody still here, let's go through the cards, starting with the leader ability itself. Because usually before the last patch, Wreck this flurry actually just did one thing and that was just deal eight damage spread out across all of your enemy's units bypassing armor this has been buffed extremely to my mind because it has been changed to um an ability with three charges so instead of doing it all at once you do it in three separate charges that you can choose to spread out over all your rounds and you can split three damage randomly between all of your enemy units ignoring their armor as well um, but you can split that up into three charges, which means you have extreme amounts of control with this leader ability and it has been buffed to nine damage in total instead of eight. So very, very powerful indeed, especially since you can now spread that across rounds. I feel like with this change, um, CDBR made Onslaught a bit, well, redundant because this is just obviously better. You have more damage and you still have three charges so you can choose whenever it's going to happen. Um, and you can spend them all at once if you want as well, which is, is something you can do with Onslaught. So yeah, definitely the way better option as a leader ability. But the cards are also very interesting because because of some of the changes that we've seen, mostly with Coral, we'll talk about her in a minute, we also included a discard package in this deck. So we have two Tweersock Skirmishers who have four power, but when they are discarded, so they are moved from your hand, to the graveyard, they are summoned immediately back to the mana row. So an easy way of getting rid of cards in your hand and getting some value from them regardless. Next up, of course, is the Heime Skjold, or Skald, uh, who of course gives you four power, and when you deploy him, you draw a card into your hand and then you discard a card. If you do that on the skirmishers we just talked about, you basically have eight points with just four provisions. Well, of course, multiple of four provisions, but still eight points and, of course, thinning from your deck, which is what we're trying to do here. Then we have a lot of bombs in this deck as well, because this deck includes Maddock. We'll be talking about him in a minute. He's a rather new card that um, has seen a lot of play ever since he was first introduced. Uh, but it's the first time that I'm actually using him in one of our decks. So Red Haze is a bomb for four provisions and you choose an enemy unit and then damage an adjacent enemy unit with its power. Very powerful against monster decks. Some of the uh, syndicate decks that are live as well, especially the one with Pirate's Cove, if your opponent forgets about this card and just puts two high-powered units right next to each other, you can do some serious damage. Usually taking out the lower power unit, but of course you can also turn it around and try to do as much damage as you can. Then another bomb, Dancing Star. This is basically the opposite of Red Haze. This allows you to damage an enemy unit by three, and if you kill that unit, you move to the unit next to it on the right and damage it by one less which means that if you kill something of three power then you do two damage to the unit on the right as well basically allowing you to start thinning out your opponent's swarms if you play this one correctly also summons maddock of course now we have the dimeridium bomb which allows you to damage a unit by four simple straight forward card and also give it veil it has some uses especially if you're like targeting something like a hamadryad which relies on vitality uh, with the veil they won't be able to apply vitality on that card but it's of course limited you'll try to use this more uh, as a straightforward damage card now we have a bear witcher quartermaster four power one armor five provisions and gains zeal for its order ability, which is damage an allied unit by one, and then spawn a Witcher student on this road. The Witcher students have two power, so technically if you can put these damage points onto armor, shields, or units that benefit from getting damage, which we have a few of, you gain eight points for five provisions, which is 
very, very handy. Uh, you can even damage Maddock, because of course, if you want to destroy Maddock, it doesn't really matter, uh, and you gain those 8 points regardless. Now we have two Bear Witches, of course, some of the strongest 5 provision cards in Skellige right now, 8 power, and if you deploy himself, well, he will just damage himself by 3, which gives you 5 power, but on Adrenaline 4, you damage yourself and an enemy unit you can target by 3 damage instead, giving you, again, those 8 points for 5 provisions. Now we have probably the most interesting bomb card in this deck, which is Northern wind you can damage a unit by four which is pretty low for a five provision card but if you kill it with that four provision damage um, with that four damage you actually banish that card so very good against enemy maddox the redanian the flying redanian from syndicate and other cards that you just want to banish banish from the field like saris even saris is a very good target for this card and again summons maddock there we have basically a very cool tech card so maxi van decker the first time she was introduced i didn't really see the point of her but since then she actually got a provision buff and she's made a lot more interesting so basically what maxi allows you to do is 46 points that you're getting, you can take a look at your entire deck from top to bottom. And then you can choose, do you pick one card that you definitely don't want to see in your hand in the coming rounds and put that right at the bottom and then shuffle your entire deck. Uh, that card of course stays at the bottom. Or do you say, okay, I see what my deck is going to be in the next couple of cards. I'm very, very pleased with that and I don't select a card and don't shuffle my deck. This basically gives you the information you need to make that decision. Because your deck might be shuffled badly, you can reshuffle it and try your luck on the next round. Or you can see, okay, there's some really powerful gold cards at the top of my deck. I can stay like this. So a very, very cool tech card, which is often underestimated, especially by me as well. Now we have Dorgaray of Vol, of course, a simple lock card. Uh, we could have also used the Skellige variation. You can change them with that, because that's the same provisions, if I recall correctly, and you get one extra point of power, but you need Bloodthirst to trigger the lock, uh, which you don't need with Dorgaray. Now we have Gert. Gert, another very powerful Skellige Witcher, because as I said, this is basically a Skellige Witcher deck. Uh, starts at eight power, which is a lot, uh, and then also spawns a Deafening Siren on the opposing row. If you're not at Adrenaline 3 yet, you damage all units on that row by one as well. If you are at Adrenaline 3, you only damage the Deafening Siren by one. Generates Bloodthirst, not that this deck is focused on Bloodthirst, but especially the non-Adrenaline uh, ability is what you're looking for. It's just uh, very powerful against Swarming decks. And now we have Harold Houndsnout, the, uh, one of the cards that I talked about that the Quartermasters would be really good against. Uh, starts at 4 power, but also spawns 3 of Harold's Pals, which are these skeleton um, yeah, friends of his. Because, <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he's, he's very peculiar character from the Witcher 3 but those Herald pals are summoned on the other row to which you put Herald on so if you put Herald on the range row they will be spawned on the meta row for example and he has an order ability that allows you to damage an allied unit by one if you kill one of the pals they damage a random enemy unit on the opposing side by two so very good targets for your quartermaster because uh, of course Herald is definitely gonna die uh, when he's on the board because he has just a way too low uh, power count here. Now we have Morgvark, another card that you can freely discard and he will pop up back on the field because if this unit moves to the graveyard during the round, which includes discarding, you summon it to the melee row and give it doomed. Uh, you could technically purify him to do that again, but most of the time you'll just use him as a free discard. Now we have Coral, again, we talked about her uh, before, but she has six power and got a, uh, yeah, that basically a power buff uh, for eight provisions. She has an order ability which allows you to discard a card and then draw a card. So basically the other way around from the skull. So you first discard, then you draw. And whenever you discard a card, you also damage a random enemy unit by two. So you can play Coral first, discard one of the skirmishers or Morgvark, and then play uh, something like the Skald or the next card that we're gonna talk about and just gain more more, more damage from those discards on top of all the other benefits that discarding gives you. Because of course we also have Burnout Bran in this deck rounding out the discard package 6 power and allows you to draw 2 cards and then discard 2 cards. Don't be a dumbass like me because on the last stream I used this card at the very beginning of a round and then of course you lose one of those cards. Because you only pull one card, your hand is full, the second card is automatically removed and then you need to, you are forced to discard 2 cards so I basically you give yourself card disadvantage, uh, which is not good. But otherwise, double discard, very, very powerful card to thin your deck a little bit. 
Herrenkatteruch is our location card for Skalagev, still very powerful, resilient, so it stays on the board and deploys a, uh, well, usually you're going to go for a Bear Witcher or a Quartermaster. Uh, in certain situations, the Adept or the Mentor could also very power be very powerful, because all of these cards are just extremely, extremely powerful, so uh, definitely worth any of those, but usually Bear Witcher or the Quartermaster. And this location card also has an order ability, which allows you to heal the adjacent units by two, giving you four more points. So technically, if you count like the Bear Witcher as eight points, this card is 12 points in total, which is very, very good. Then we have a very peculiar card that doesn't see a lot of play, but is included in this deck, mostly because of course, it's a very powerful card, but of course it also fits the team of this deck. It's another Witcher. So Junot of Belhaven starts at six power and destroys a damaged enemy unit. So you need to make sure that you have a damaged enemy unit at on the board, but this card just basically cancels out that card. It basically destroys it in one go. And on top of that, which is the benefit of this card, you get six points. Don't forget about that. So basically on a lot of units, this counts as a Karate Heat Wave, but with another six points on top of that. You need to set it up, of course, but it kind of gives you more points than just basically removing a card from the field for also only nine provisions. Then we have Geralt Quen, which can be used as a uh, tutor for any of the witches in the deck. I think the bear witches are probably the best because uh, the bear witches with a shield, because you can deploy a witcher card from your deck and give it a shield if you're at Adrenaline Tree. With that shield, the Bear Witcher becomes an 11 point card, which is extremely, extremely good. So with Geralt on top of that, that's a 13 point play. Uh, of course, you need to wait until Adrenaline Tree to do that, but otherwise you can also use him just as a simple tutor for any of the other Witcher cards, of which there are even more, because the next one, of course, is Madoc, also Witcher, but you want to have this card in your graveyard or your deck still, because whenever you play a bomb card, you summon this card from your deck to a random ally draw, or, of course, from your graveyard. He has an order ability in which he destroys himself and spawns Cataclysm for one turn on the opposing row. And Cataclysm is a row effect that on the start of your opponent's turn will damage three units by one. So splits three random damage. Basically another uh, charge of Reckless Flurry, but without the armor bypassing. So Cataclysm does hit armor. Very powerful. You can also discard Madoc if you have him in your hand and couldn't get rid of it any other way. You can discard him safely and then play a bomb and he will still be pulled from the graveyard. And we're still not done with the Witchers because Geralt Axie is also in this deck. So another 5 power Witcher with 2 armor this time. So you can use him as a target for your Quartermasters. And his ability is Purify a Unit and Reset its Power. So you're getting rid of like Defender statuses, Shield statuses and any boosts that are on that card. So extremely powerful tutor card, which can also just function as a resetter for something like Osrael if you're playing against monsters. Another Witcher, Lambert Swordmaster is also in this deck, six power and basically a hard counter to swarm deck. So he damages an enemy unit and all of its copies by two. So especially against Elven Deadeyes, um, the priests of Syndicate, they're all gonna die uh, in one fell swoop. Even this also hard counter something like a uh, defender like Azar Javed. Um, just basically killing, killing those scarabs in one go. So yeah, a Lambert Swordmaster, very, very powerful card in today's meta. And also counts as a Witcher, so you can pull him with Geralt Quen if you wouldn't have him in your hand. And then the final card in this deck is the Svalblood Totem, another location card that gains resilience. You spawn a Svalblood Fanatic on both sides of this card, and of course these guys have 4 power. Um, which is not that powerful at a glance, so you start with 8 points for your 10 provisions, but the order ability on the totem allows you to damage the adjacent units by 2, and the fanatics have an ability that when they hit 2 power, they transform into a 6 power abomination, turning this card into a 12 point card for 10 provisions, so still very much worth it. And that's the final card, we still have the stratagem, but it's the the default stratagem, so the tactical advantage, allowing you to boost an allied unit by five. Simple as that. So with that said, let's head into an example match, because right now I haven't yet lost with this deck, so we'll see how that's gonna work. Probably uh, something I shouldn't have said beforehand, but let's head into the example matches. And our first opponent is Double Cross. We're gonna have to be careful against that deck, but uh, we should be good to go, I think. Um, the biggest 
issue, well not issue, with this deck is that you need to be really careful in how you play this card. It's kind of hard to pilot because you have a lot of tools, but you need to be careful not to waste your tools early on. Uh, but we'll get into the details in a minute. I don't need that many bomb cards. I'm thinking I'm going to get rid of the diamond bomb and red haze. No, I think dancing star is probably going to be better. So red haze gone and we get another lock. Okay. So the first steps that you take with this deck are, of course, the discards. You want to get rid of most of the cards that you can discard. Right now, we only have the Skirmisher that we can discard, but there's going to be plenty more once we start drawing cards. So our opponent starts with a Nausicaa Sergeant, so the default starting play for um, Nilfgaard these days, and he immediately Crystal Skulls it as well with a nice Defender there. Uh, let's start with Coral. So Coral allows you to discard a card if you use her order ability, which we're going to do immediately and then get rid of the Tweestark Skirmisher. This gives us an extra four points on the board, an extra two damage on the Nazgul Sergeant, and that's a good start, I think. So that's 12 points in one go with just an eight provision card in Coral. As long as Coral is on the board, which I don't think she will be for long. Oh, she actually will. Interesting. They immediately start boosting that Nausicaa Sergeant. I don't think that's going to be a good idea because we still have like Geralt Axie here and it's probably one of the better targets for that. Um, but next up, I think I'm going to yeah, use Burna Brand. So right now I can use Burna because if she leaves my hand, I'm going to draw two cards and then discard two cards. So draw two cards to a full hand. Not that many good cards. I don't need the Heime Scald again, because I'm not going to be discarding that many more cards. So that one can go. And I think I might get rid of... Mm, Red Haze might actually be good. Uh, let's get rid of Northern Wind, because I don't think I need to... Do I need to banish a card? Let's leave it over there. I won't have a good target for the Bear Witcher Quartermaster just now. Yeah, let's get rid of him. And that's two more uh, hits on the damage over there. So that's... That was still 10 points, even though we didn't discard any of the, the good cards that are there for discarding. And we get eight, car eight points from our opponent as well. Okay. Okay, that's a rather good start, I think. I think I'm just going to play this Fallblood Totem now to just have a little bit of an upper hand. There we go. That's going to be 12 points in total, and we can just push our way forward with this play. And then next up, I really need to start playing uh, some of the bombs. Ah, oh, we get Joachim. Can I damage... I can actually damage Joachim here. That actually might be a good play. So he's probably gonna... They're probably gonna lock Coral. Yeah, there we go. So I'm actually going to destroy my own unit here. So I am going to banish Joachim. Because Joachim can be played like a lot uh, in uh, Nilfgaard. So I'm actually going to get rid of this card. There we go. And then I, I'm also able to use the Svalblad Totem and get those two abominations over there. And we're still at equal points right now, which is really good. And there we go. We actually get a pass from our opponent. I'm not going to pass on equal, I just, I'm, I'm probably going to push even. So let's just, I can actually get rid of that dancing star I think. So let's just double tap Maddox and then put the dancing star on something like over there so we can get that back. Just getting rid of my four provision bronzes here. And then we can just see what else we're going to be facing. Can I? There we go. There we go, let's pass. So I think that was really good. We got rid of Joachim, even though he was on our side of the board. And we won the first round with, of course, just one card down, but that's not a problem. Um, and we can actually play one more card. Hmm. We get, of course, now the two cards that I still can discard, but I think I got rid of most of the discarders right now. Uh, I don't have any proper discards now. Okay. Um, which means... I'm going to actually use Maxi. I'm going to put the Skirmisher and Morgvark back in the deck. And we're going to be just playing Maxi to see what the deck is right now. So we're looking at Heron Kaduch, then Junot, and then we will be able to... So yeah, I think this is pretty good. We're not going to be getting Geralt Quen. But other than that, we get Harold and we get Heron Kaduch. So that is, that is actually really good. So let's just confirm and not shuffle any further. 
And our opponent is deciding. Okay, so the Curie. Look at the top three cards. Okay, that's not a problem. Although they could, of course, come to a card out of my deck now. Still not that much of a problem, I think. If it's only one card, it could be Hern Kadu. Um, but I am going to pass now. Because that will not have changed much. Because I'm still going to be pulling the top three cards. Unless, of course, they now go for Cantarella. Okay, Gorter Gevade, but that's not going to be a problem. They're just going to steal one of the cards. It's probably going to be Hern Kadu. Uh, or Junot. So they yeah. get, I get a Duchess Informant and they get Junot. Okay. That is too bad because Junot is a very good card. But they still need to be able to damage something to pull something off there. Hmm. That was actually a good play. And we get a Duchess Informant. Do we need that Duchess Informant? I know what the next two cards are going to be. So I need to discard the Skirmisher. And then Morkvar can actually stay, I think. I could. Um, so the next one is going to be Harold Houndsnout. Yeah, let's get rid of Morkvar. I'll probably be able to pull out another... Um, okay, we got a connection lost there. I hope my time is still going to be given to me. I could be able to get a lock out of my opponent if I use the Duchess Informant. Poison will be useless, but locks would be really interesting. So I think I'm going to get rid of Morkvark here. And the connection lost is actually taking a while, so I might... I think our opponent might have actually rage quit it here. Usually when that happens, it means that, <laughs> that our opponent just quit the game. So I think we're going to be giving a win here in a minute. Connection lost, but it's taking... There we go. Okay. All right, that's a bit sad. I did manage to show you a little bit, but we're definitely going to be doing another one. So let's just GG uh, and continue on. And we get... Okay, this is very interesting. It's also a tough matchup. So this is going to be Kel'Tullus, the Carapace monster deck. This is a really, really tough fight every single time. So we're going to be looking at... I could actually keep Madoc over here. So this is actually a pretty good starting hand. Uh, I can get rid of the Quartermaster. Red Haze is also very interesting, so I'm gonna just get rid of Dancing Star and get another lock. Hmm, I got a lot of... I think Burna needs to go. I don't have any cards to discard here. Whew, interesting. So I still have Madoc in my hand, which was on purpose because I can discard him. So I think Harold Hansen is also really good. Um, do I use Maxi? That Maxi is way too early. Let's start out with the Svalblood Totem. Uh, I'm gonna keep Harold for last, because Harold is gonna be really good giving us some extra units. And of course, uh, allowing those units to be destroyed by Kaltullus. And we get a Defender immediately. That is gonna be used for... Yeah, that's gonna be used to actually get rid of the uh, to protect the Siri, of course. I don't know why, why I was hesitating to say something there. I'm gonna have to use Maxi, I think. Because I can use Coral now, but Coral, yeah, it's not gonna be that useful. So I think I'm gonna be playing, yeah, let's play Maxi first. Um, if the top deck is, the top part of the deck is good, it actually is pretty good. Um... Only Geralt Axie is pretty low, but other than that, the, the, the line looks really good. Because I can discard two cards with uh, Burna. And that means that we can discard Morgvark. Yeah, I think it's really good. It's actually pretty good. Let's, let's just stay on that. And I'm going to actually tap... Yeah, let's tap this Fall Blood Totem here. There we go. So I think I'm, I'll definitely use one of my Reckless Flurry Charges here. And use Juno to get rid of the Defender. Um, and then we still have Coral, although I probably won't have a good way of taking out Siri here. It will all depend on the yeah, whether they're using charges on Siri there. So I don't have a Purify either. So Red Haze is not going to work because I can't uh, select Siri, I think. Even with this, I won't be able to be able to select Siri. So Reckless Flurry should hopefully go at least once on the Defender. That's actually really, really good. Uh, and then we use Juno to take out the cave troll. There we go. So now that leaves... Technically, I could now kill Siri. Um, I'm not going to. Because I still have another turn. To kill her. I even have two turns. But it does give me a bit of options here. They could over go overboard with the boosts. 
which is probably what they're going to do. Yeah, they're going for the uh, the double boost. Should have probably used... I think I can also just lock her now, um, which is probably the better play. So let's just lock her now. Um, yeah, I still don't have a use for the tactical advantage there. You might actually get a pass here. Uh, but this is the strength of this deck. You have so many options. Um, and it's just really powerful to use like this. So let's use Coral now. Uh, Coral goes over here. We discard Morkvark, of course. And then we get Burna in hand. So that's the first one we're getting. Um, I'm still not going to use Tactical Advantage. That's definitely not something that I still uh, that I want to use right now. We got Natural Selection on Coral. But that's not a problem at all. Because now we can actually kill the Beast with Red Haze. Although Red Haze is going to be more powerful later on. I think I shouldn't, I shouldn't waste that card right now. Um, I could still use Gert actually, because Gert is not going to be much else. Because um, this, the Kaltulus deck doesn't really swarm that much, so let's boost Coral up right now. And end it there. And we get Kaltulus now. Um, that is a very early Kaltulus play. So the next hit is going to be 6 and then equal. But Kaltulus is going to be gone. So it is going to be equal points if they want to pass. So they're going to have to play a card and it's going to be very inefficient. Or I play Harold now, which is also an option. Uh, I think I'm just going to pass. Yeah, I'm just going to pass. So they're going to get two points on the Beast and six points out of the Keltullus. But that is only eight points, so that gives them equal. Yeah, okay, they count it the same way. Okay, that's good. And they got Maxi now to double check if their deck is going to be good up next. Okay. I think that was the right call. They, I think they just waste, wasted Galtellus there. That was really, really early for Galtellus. Unless they have a way to pull it back, but I'm assuming not. So now we know what cards we're going to get. Uh, Herrn Kaduch. I think I can go without Northern Wind. Uh, although Red Haze could definitely be um, be wasted here. So let's get rid of Northern Wind. Um, and then we get Lambert. And I think after that was Morgfark, right? So we can get rid of the Heimei Skjold and get Morgfark, yeah. And we get the Troll immediately. Um, okay. Fair enough, I guess. I don't have a target for... They're really going to push this, are they? Um, I'm going to put Harold down now. There we go. And next up we can do Herrn Kaduch. Which is going to give us a squ the Quartermaster and just destroy most of those skulls anyway. And we get Vigern. Okay, that's really good. Because now I can kill... Um, yeah, I can, I can kill Nitral with the Vigern. Like this. Um, I can actually use Harold now once. It's going to at least take one of the army away. And I'm guessing our opponent is going to pass now. Yeah, okay, there we go. Um, so now I'm going to actually use Herrn Kaduch. Because I can use that then in the next turn for the healing points. Um, so let's use the Quartermaster over here. And just hit those two. And that's actually going to kill the, the Wygern in one go. So we don't actually need to do anything else. There we go. There, there we go. Okay, passing sometimes doesn't work, but that was good. Okay, so Kaltullus is gone, so the only thing that's still coming is going to be Osrael. Osrael, I think I won't be able to do anything against, because it's going to be their last card. And we're going first, so they have advantage. We do have two Bear Witchers, we have Geralt's Quen, so I think that's a pretty good... This is not going to do anything, is it? Dancing Star can go... Quartermaster can actually go onto Geralt's Quen, so that's still 8 points. Yeah, I think that's good. Uh, I still have a few cards in deck here, but I think I'll be doing the discarding for that. So that's just... Yeah, finish redrawing. Okay, I go first, which means that we're gonna start strong with Burna. So we draw two cards and then discard two. The chances of me getting... Yeah, the Skirmisher, I think... 
I kind of remembered the order of our deck. Uh, so we can get rid of Morgfark and the Skirmisher. And that just gives us 15 points in one go. There we go. That's what we're here for. Then we get the Apiarian Phantom. The Apiarian Phantom, I think I should probably kill. Um, and I can do that with just one Reckless Flurry. There we go. One Reckless Flurry. I don't have any other dam oh, damage dealers because Lambert is not going to... It's just not enough, so I'm just going to use Northern Wind to get rid of this thing. And get another Madoc on the field. So I think we're good. I think we're pretty good. So either our opponent gives us some targets. Oh, and Osrael comes first. Osrael comes first. That is that is not a good idea, my friend. That is really not a good idea. I'm not going to care about it too much just yet. Um, I'm actually not even going to damage it. So we're going to first play the Quartermaster. Uh, put those two points onto Maddock. Because I don't care about Maddock in the slightest. Because he can die in a minute. And I'm still going to get three points out of it. Oh, yes. I knew that was going to be the problem. As long as I don't kill that thing, I'm going to have a lot of value for our... Uh, yeah, for our, our um, purifier and resetter in a minute. Because I think I still have him, right? Still have Axie, right? <laughs> there we go. Still have Gerald Axie, so... I'm 99% sure that we're easily going to win this match. The Keltellus play was way too early. And even without it, we could have um, won that with the Herald Hound's Net play, so... Yeah, this is this is just not gonna end well for our opponent. Um, so another three damage. Don't really care because it's gonna be all null and void in a minute anyway. Especially if they still have something left. Like I'm assuming there's still a heat wave in there, or even a curse of corruption. Because curse of corruption is gonna be useless because they have the highest unit. Then we get parasites on ourselves. Okay, we could still use Lambert Swordmaster. Just to see how, how much this is going to make a difference. So 18 points ahead with one card advantage. But of course the last play is going to be really good. Yeah, okay, we get Imliot's Wrath. And then the last one is just going to be us killing that uh, Osrael just outright. So let's just play Geralt Quen into Geralt Axi. Uh, which is going to purify and reset that Osrael to one point, And then Reckless Flurry is just going to kill it. There we go. 38 zero the field is completely empty i don't think our opponents will even have a unit that is going to be a target i'm assuming that's just going to be nothing yeah i would indeed make a good slave and there we go good ulti heat wave 37 zero an entirely empty board against keltolis that was yeah it was partly because our opponent played keltolis too soon but even with that we would have Harold to just basically nullify Keltilus uh, at once. And there we go, the perfect examples as to how powerful this deck can be. The most important thing to keep in mind is use your discards at the beginning so you know which cards that you can get. You can get your most powerful cards in hand by the end of the match. Be careful with your tools. You have a lot of tools um, against basically anything. So Lambert uh, against Swarms. Um, Axie against like very powerful boosted cards like the one we saw with Osrael. You can use them on Colgrim as well. Uh, same with Junot, also very high target units, very high power units you can target with this, but they need to be damaged, so it requires a bit more setup. And then everything else is just good for supporting that. Because even with the bombs, especially Northern Winds, you can take out opposing Maddox, you can take out the Flying Rodanians. So you basically have tools for everything, just be very careful as to how you use them. Um, usually you want to look at the deck that you're facing, know which card in your tool set is the one that you really need, as I just described, and keep that card for last, and use your other tools to just deal damage, because that's what this deck is really good at. Um, especially Red Haze can be very underestimated by some people, because um, even the bombs are tailored to the same differences, so Red Haze is for high-powered units, Dancing Star is more for Swarms, and that way you can basically play everything. And that Maxi is a very good card if you just need a little bit of points to just bridge the gap for the first round or your pass round. Um, it's a very good card to just see, am I looking good in my deck or not? And if you're not looking good, you can shuffle. We haven't shown that here, but you can definitely shuffle your deck uh, to get 
a better outcome for yourself. So that is the Fist of Flurry deck. So as I said, the Fist of Flurry deck is one of our top meta decks. You can check out all the other decks in the meta snapshot in the link in the description of this video. The link to this specific deck is there as well, because for once I didn't make any adjustments. It's all uh, the fruits of the labor of my teammates that was in this deck. And it's it's just a very fun deck to play around with. It's not as much fun as you, if you're facing it because of the plenty of uh, damage that you're going to be facing but still it's a very very fun deck to play for yourself so hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode of grand touch if you did let me know in the comment section down below if you have any experiences with this deck or even tips to improve it because that's what we're here for after all helping each other out so thank you guys mostly for watching if you want to talk i'm also on twitter so at tro trovinut that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T if you want to talk. And uh, yeah, I'd like to thank you enormously for watching because the support I've been getting on these videos are, have, have been really, really, really nice. So thank you again for the probably fourth time I said this in this video. For enormously for watching and I see you in the next episode of Gwentich. Goodbye and stay nutty.